Welcome to another game here called Children of a Dead Earth. This is a game that touts itself as the most realistic space simulation ever. And uh, I heard that claim and I wanted to put it to a test. It's a game that I've been wanting to try for a little while and it was good to have the opportunity to uh, try it out. I'd like to thank the company that made this for providing me with a key and enabling me to give this a shot for you guys. And uh, we'll see. I'll say that I think the gameplay in this game is a little bit lacking, but it is a pretty nice game. Uh, it could do with like a, a scenario creation, maybe. That could be something really cool. You know, there's a sandbox mode where you can kind of create your own scenario, but I think it'd be pretty cool if people could create their own scenarios and submit them to the Steam Workshop. So uh, if creators of the game are listening to me, then that might be something you might want to try for. So we're going to try a campaign. I've tried a couple of missions out just to kind of get a feel for it. We're going to start with this one. Now this is a... I don't really like the name of the game, Children of a Dead Earth. It, it's a cool sounding game, but it doesn't tell you anything about what it really means. So, okay. Basically, we're trying to shoot down the ship for this mission. So we have a ship here and we need to intercept with this ship and dock. So it's it has a very, very realistic space field. Objects move around like they do in reality. You can plan a maneuver similar to how you do in Kerbal Space Program, you know, with the same three axes, but it's a little bit better in terms of its feel and, and you don't have to actually execute the burn manually. The game will take care of that for you. You just do the planning. Okay, so one thing that's cool, we have approximation to our orbit. We can change the frame of reference to the ship and you see all of this direction is from the point of view of the ship where does it appear that you are so we can take a radial burn and now all of a sudden we're close enough that we can plot an intercept course and we've plotted a intercept course to to uh, to this enemy ship we go back to the mercury view you can see that it's actually a rather complex process to make this happen but it will work so you run this game in time steps. And it follows all mechanics. It's an end body simulation, so it will take into account things like Lagrange points and everything else. Okay, so we have intercepted. What we're gonna do is we're gonna orient it nose forward and we're going to launch We'll launch all of the drones and the decoys that we have. So this is a carrier ship. It has some drones. Let's take a look on the brighter side. Okay. Uh, a couple key features. You have these panels here that are radiator panels because keeping a spacecraft cool is probably one of the most important things in a real space battle. You do have gun ports on here and they're rail guns, so magnetic rail guns like uh, we're starting to experiment with them on navy ships um you have thrusters in the back they have this long narrow design that is efficient for space battles it's not something you typically see in science fiction but it makes sense because you can point it straight at it and it's really hard to hit a target that's pointed straight at you so we'll go ahead and Let's take a look at the enemy ship. The enemy ship looks very, very similar. Uh, one thing of note, these are the most powerful weapons and we're gonna try to take those out first. And let's go ahead and unpause the game. You can see where those are our decoys that are firing out. We're hoping to be able to um, launch a few more of our drones with the help of those decoys. 
can see they're starting to already move in to the uh, target. Cool. So we can change the point of view to the ship here. You see it's firing at us, which is not good. But uh, these drones are facing their weapons straight towards it, and they're targeting. You can look at the look at the spray of the bullets here. It's very random. You expect some random variation. It seems to model that very well, and it definitely models stuff like the amount of time it takes to get to a particular spot. Um. We're going to now orient our ship broadside so that it has a little bit better firepower pointed at there, just like Navy ships of old. Look at all this firepower. Where is it going? Oh, there it comes. Uh, it looks like we're off a little bit in our aiming, probably because, yeah, it's accelerating. So let's see if we can aim for something. Here, let's pause this. We'll aim a little bit further forward and we'll turn off the aiming to the foil guns. With that improved aiming, we'll see if we can take into account the motion of the ship. Now, because the ship's been moving around, it's a lot harder to hit. So we have this kind of spray of bullets even helps to take into account. And there we go. We blew it up. Cool. So it's our first mission successful. That was not bad at all. Okay. Looks like I did a little bit faster in the past. Um, now we're going to do a rendezvous. Now, most of the rendezvous, you have lots of fuel to spare uh, in this game. This one, we don't. So we're going to do Incoming. an optimal, uh, disable help, uh, type burn. So it'll be tangential. Pull it in, just like we would do with Kerbal Space Program. Then once we're here, we'll add another trajectory point, another maneuver, to pull us in even tighter until we see this nice green thing that means we can join the station. And now we have our maneuver, so we'll just go ahead and run it. Uh, this is a lot slower than some of the previous sims, so I'm going to do it in one day steps. So now we've burned to get closer. Uh, we'll switch to six hours. And I'll go for a full day. And there we go. So it took us a long time, but we barely used any fuel at all. Looks like I beat my record here. So that's all I've got for now. Uh, let me know what you think of this game, and we will try it more. But for now, keep on tracking, and we will see you next time.